Our last speaker, Rabbi Eli Bansou Bechavot. שיסעלו כאן של צדיקים לפני הקדוש ברוך הוא יותר מחורבן בית המקדש. My dear friends, we are here this evening to say words of his speed For the Miruham, the Tzaddik, the Biliahu ben Shafi'a, Ruach Adonai, Teni Chenu Began Eden, Amen. Hachamim say that we mustn't underestimate the passing of Tzaddikim. It is difficult to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the passing of the Tzaddikim, as great as the destruction of the Beit HaMikdash. My Rabbi Hacham Baruch Ben Hayim Alav Shalom, when he delivered his sped for Hacham Ben Siona Bashaul Alav Shalom, he explained this Hazal and he said, what is the connection between the passing of Sadiqim and the Beit HaMikdash destruction? And he said in the Beit HaMikdash, they brought sacrifices on a daily basis. Timidin, Qurban Tamid, as we read in this week's Perasha. And those Qurbanot brought kapara, brought atonement for the sins of the Jewish people. When we had a Beit HaMikdash, we had korbanot that were mechaper. The korbanot protected us from our sins. Ukshinehirav bet hamikdash had tzaddik mechaper. Today we don't have a bet hamikdash, but we have tzaddikim. And the tzaddik is like the korban. And when a tzaddik passes, we must know that a korban has been offered on the great Mizbeach in heaven. And we must know that this is indeed kapara, not for the tzaddik. The tzaddik does not need kapara. He is the vehicle, he is the mechaper. Is there such a thing that tzaddikim are korbanot? Where is this concept written that tzaddikim are sacrifices? My rabbi went on to say that if you study the Gemara in Hagiga on page 12, the Gemara there lists the names of the seven heavens. And when the Gemara gets to the heaven that's called Zivul, what happens in this area in the heavens called Zevul? Shebo Yerushalayim. If you could believe it, that just like there's Yerushalayim Shel Mata, there's Yerushalayim Shel Ma'ala. In the heaven called Zevul, there is the city of Jerusalem. Umizbeach Banui. And in that area in the heaven, there is indeed a Mizbayah. U Michael Sar Hagadol Omed Umakrib Alab Kurban Becholyom. And there's a ministering angel called Michael Sar Hagadol. And he brings Kurbanot on this Mizbayah every day. But the Kurbanot on this Mizbayah are not animals. 
or birds or flower meal offerings. The Gemara says, Umam Makrib. What does he bring? Nishmatan shel tzaddikim. The Nishamot of the tzaddikim. This is mentioned in our prayers that we say every day in the prayer of Ritzeh. The Bet Yosef explains when we say, Ve'ishe Yisrael utfilatam mehera be'ahaba tekabel beratzon. Says the Bet Yosef, I understand what it means tefilatam tekabel beratzon. You should accept our prayers, but Ishe Yisrael, the fires of Israel, we do not have a better Mikdash today. So how could we ask God that he should accept the fires of Israel the Ishe Yisrael? There's no Ishe Yisrael today. This is not something that should be mentioned in the prayers. It doesn't apply. Says the Bet Yosef, the Ishe Yisrael can mean Melashon Ish. The important ones of Israel that are put on the Mizbeach of Michael, that happens. There was a great sacrifice that was brought this week on the Mizbeach in Bet Zevul by the Kohen Saragadon Michael. And Hakam Baruch Alav Shalom would say that when Michael brings the korban, he makes a prayer, and he says, "Rabbonu Shel Olam, let this korban be an atonement and a kapara for his people." And therefore, it is very befitting not to be lazy at this hesped. First of all, we should never be lazy at Hesped, but specifically of a Tamid Hakam that gives us so much benefit. What more important things could we be doing than sitting at Hesped of Tamid Hakam that benefiting us like a Korban? I would like to bring to your attention what our great rabbi of Hayim bin Attar al Shalom and Urahi Makadosh says. He says, Of course, we understand Titzaveh to mean, and you, Moshe, command the people. But he says the word titzaveh in Hebrew has an alternate meaning. Ki malachav yitzavelach. There the word yitzaveh means to accompany. That the malachim will accompany. They will make levaya. Says Zohar HaMakadosh, a tremendous hindus from the Zohar HaKadosh. That every Talmid Hacham, a true Talmid Hacham, that is, has a nitzotz of Moshe Rabbeinu inside of him. Sometimes in the Gemara, when a rabbi says a brilliant idea, his colleagues say, Moshe Shapir Ka'amart. They say to the rabbi, Moshe, you said good, but his name is not Moshe. Says, Ora HaMakadosh, because that's from the nitzots of Moshe that's inside of him. So they say, that came from the Moshe in you. Moshe Shapir Ka'amart. And says the Rav, that in every generation, Moshe accompanies us. Yisrael. And you, Moshe, will accompany the Jewish people in every generation. And I am not one to know or make bold statements. That I will leave for the great Hachamim to make their affirmative assessments on what the reality of things are. 
But if I had to guess and make an educated guess, I would venture to say that the Miruham was accompanied by the Nitzots of Moshe. The fact that he died in this perasha, but I have another reason why I believe such. And again, I will leave the final verdict to the great rabbis, what they say, but I must present my theory because I do believe it is emit. Our great rabbi, Hakam Eliyahu, Ben Shafi'a, Allah B'Shalom, possessed the trait of Moshe. Moshe Rabbeinu, amongst his many traits, the Torah focuses on one. Be'ish Moshe Anav. Me'od. It seems that this is the key of Moshe's greatness, his humility. The Pasuk says, If you want to know where you'll find Chokmah, first you have to find Me'ayin. Look where there's something that is very humble and is insignificant in its thinking and is close to nothing. When you find somebody that is me'ayin, and it's not so easy to find, this is a rare breed because most people are yesh. As was mentioned in the previous derashot, but if you're lucky once to find somebody that has the measure of me'ayin, certainly in that place you will find chokhmah. Ve'ha'chokhmah me'ayin timmatzeh. Ayin is nothing. Me'ayin. And our rabbis tell us in the holy books, that if you want to know the essence of a person, look at his name. It's all in the name. So somewhere in Moshe's name, it must hint to us that he was the most humble of all men. Well, if you take the name Moshe, Mem Shin He, Moshe, no hint to his humility. But you have to search. So the holy books say, just like there's apparent letters of a person's name, there's also letters that are called the milui. These are the hidden letters in a person's name, the letters that fill the initial letter. Take the letter mem. Although we write it as one mem, but it is pronounced mem, which is mem mem. The second letter, which is hidden, is a mem. If you take the last letter of Moshe's name, it's a he. Well, he is written he, but if you pronounce he, it's he aleph. The hidden letter is aleph. Now we have a mem from mem, and an aleph from he. And then we have the middle letter of Moshe's name, is sheen. The apparent letter is the letter sheen, the one letter, but the fill-in letters is a yud and a nun. Now we have a mem from mem, an aleph from the he, and a yud nun from the sheen that spells me'ayin. me'ayin That's Moshe. Because Moshe Rabbeinu was totally, totally effaced. He did not hold of himself at all. And that was the secret of his greatness. And therefore, if you delve into the DNA of Moshe's name, into the genome of his name, you'll find the secret of his greatness was that 
He had no recognition of his greatness or of himself. His assessment of himself was me'ayin. And hence, ra'uchma. I must point out that yes, Moshe Rabbeinu's name is not mentioned in the perasha, but his essence is. Because if you look at the end of the perasha, you'll notice that the rabbi there that did us a great service, he tells us after every perasha how many pesukim are in the perasha. And in this perasha, he tells us 101 pesukim. Well, it's not the gematria of Moshe. I'm sorry to tell you that. Moshe is 345. No matter how you break the numbers, you can't make from 101, 345. But if you look at the essence of Moshe, Moshe is me'ayin. The mem is 40. And the nun is 90, 50, which is 90. And the yud is 10, which is 100. And the aleph is 1. Me'ayin gematria 101. So Moshe Rabbeinu, while he's not mentioned in the perasha, the whole fabric of the 101 pesukim of the perasha represents the main midah of Moshe. And then, the rabbi tells us at the end of the perasha, 101 pesukim, gematria michael. And this week, when we're commemorating the passing of a rabbi that was the Nitzotz of Moshe, Moshe Shapir Ka'amart, a tzaddik that the Nitzotz of Moshe escorted, and the Midah of Me'ayin was found in our great rabbi, and the week that Michael Saragadol brought his holy soul on the Mizbeach and Zevul, all this is alluded to in our parasha. I don't have the advantage as many of my previous speakers and the members that are here to know all the history of your illustrious community. I'm an American. I was born here. My grandparents came from Aleppo. But I'm not aware of the rich history that the community of Hakam Eliyahu had. My first interaction with the rabbi was about 10 years ago. It wasn't under the best circumstances, I must admit. My father-in-law had passed away, Allah was shalom, and his name was Yosef ben Eliyahu. A day later, my nephew, who was a little baby, passed away in the crib. And his name also was Yosef ben Eliyahu. Same name. Somebody came to me and said, two names in the family. I have a son, Yibadilla Haim. His name is Yosef ben Eliyahu. Amen. They said, you know, you need a tzaddik maybe to come and bless you. I said, I intend to go to Israel in a few months. I'll bring Berachot. They said, no, there's a, there's a big tzaddik that can help you. I said, okay, I love the tzaddikim. Tell me where to go. No, he'll come to you. When is he going to come? He'll come at 7 o'clock. It was February time, this time of the year. It was a cold night. My wife was sitting in deal for her father. So I was alone. I was waiting on the porch for the tzaddik to show up. And all of a sudden, as was mentioned, clean-shaven man, dressed in the most ordinary clothes you could ever see, comes pedaling on a bicycle, and he stops in front of my house, 
I never saw this man before. I said, oh, he must be a collector of some sort. And as he's coming out of the thing, I'm looking down the block for the tzaddik. He pulls a chicken out of the bag that he had. It was a live chicken. And I must admit, at first I said, excuse me, what are you doing over here? And then somebody followed him that came out of the car and said, no, that's the tzaddik I'm talking about. I never saw a tzaddik like this. It doesn't look like a tzaddik. It doesn't travel like a tzaddik. It doesn't behave like a tzaddik, at least. Tzaddikim that I see, no fanfare, no noise. He said, let me do my tikkun. And as I'm watching this man, I started to become afraid of him. I must admit. I said, this is a real Sadiq. This is what they talk about in the books. Somebody that's so invisible. Somebody that's so nistar. Sadiq nistar sometimes is nistar to the people, but this man is nistar to himself. That's a real Sadiq nistar. And as I saw him saying different shemot and doing tikkunim, I said, this looks like the real thing. Where did, this, where did this person come from? And before I knew it, he was back on his bicycle and he disappeared. Then I started to investigate. And from then on, whenever I would see the Rav, I would have the utmost respect for him. Many times I was able to drive the Rav when he was walking. I would insist to give him a lift, even if it was only a few blocks. And I did receive those heavy-handed blessings. Whenever I would take him, he would take something out of his pocket. He would say, this is from Se'udat Mitzvah, Grebe or something. Eat it, it's good. Zechut, Mekberachot, Pejona Ben, Mila. And I couldn't take my eyes off this man. I just looked at him. So where does he get this? Where does this come from? Such pashtut, such simplicity. The people I know are complicated. The people that I know are sophisticated. And this is simplicity to the highest level. It's, it's, it's surprising. It's shocking. One time somebody was standing in front of Hakam Yosef Raful, may live be well. And a fellow brought somebody to Acham Yosef and he said, Rabbi, you see this guy? He's a Sadiq. And the guy says, no, Rabbi Raful, I'm not a Sadiq. I'm an Ish Pashut. I'm a simple man. He says, calm down. Ish Pashut is bigger than a Sadiq. You're a Sadiq. You, you, you didn't reach the level of Ish Pashut. That's the highest Madriga, Ish Pashut. That's only reserved for very few people. Acham Eliyahu is Ish Pashut, which is the highest compliment you can give. This is, doesn't belong in this generation, this type of behavior. That's why it was so surprising when you saw him. But Baruch Hashem, we know his secret. The secret was the secret of Moshe, Me'ayin. Me'ayin That was the secret of his greatness. Benam Shil Kedushim, the grandson I don't know these rabbis, but I read a lot about them because they amaze me, they dazzle me. Stories about this great rabbi in Damascus. Miracles. Mr. Asa, may live and be well, tells me stories on the day that the great Acham Nassim passed away, that he was there. A man over 100 years old with all his faculties could see straight. It's like Moshe Rabbeinu. Where do we have these people today? And this is a direct grandson from such Sadiqim. Uh, this is a real Korban Tamid. And this is a great loss. It's a great loss for all of us. And indeed it is a Kapara. I'm very fortunate, however, that Baruch Hashem, in a small way, we still have a connection with the Rav because his sons, Shmirim Ma'el, are the pillars 
of our kolel chatzot. I don't want to talk so much because I know our policy is not to brag about kolel chatzot because it goes against everything it stands for. The kolel chatzot is supposed to be under the radar, so I won't, I won't spoil it. But suffice it to say that Baruch Hashem, we have, we have the fruits of Acham Eliyahu with us every night. And we don't take that lightly. When everybody's sleeping, and our rabbis are sitting on the floor with ashes on their head and sackcloth on their body, crying for the destruction of the Beit HaMikdash. And then learning the Kabbalah and the Torah until the morning. So I feel, Baruch Hashem, we still have a, a helik, a piece of this greatness, of this great tree. It was mentioned to me that when Hacham Eliyahu went to the Lubavitcher Rebbe, Alav Shalom, there's a picture that I received. They talked a little. The Lubavitcher Rebbe saw something that only his eyes can see and asked to talk to the rabbi in private. There's thousands of people that come to see the rabbi. He doesn't speak to anybody in private in those sessions. He saw something. Subsequently, many people from Chabad came to the rabbi during Kaparot time to have a shahita. The people asked, you Chabad, what are you coming over here to this guy? They said, what do you mean? The rabbi said, this is a Sadiq Gamur. The Rebbe said, this is Sadiq Amur, we're coming to him. That's confirmed. If the Rabbi says, this is Sadiq Amur, it's Sadiq Amur. His eyes were able to see like an x-ray machine. But most of us, even me, guy with a plaid green shirt. Very simple. But then I noticed that people know who he is. I was in deal once. Somebody was making Hanukkah Bayit. Beautiful house. And the wife is all nervous. Did he get here yet? Did he come yet? Is he here yet? Where is he? Who's he? Who is he? Who's, who's coming? Everybody's here. All the guests are here. And the rabbi pulls up with the chicken. And I was so amazed. These are people that make you take off your shoes before you come into the house. Shalna alecha ma'alna but when Hakam Eliyahu came, make the shaita, you can make it in the living room if you want. The blood and the feathers. And I told the Balabite, how do you know this rabbi? I know him, I met him 10 years ago. How do you know? He said, who doesn't know? Who doesn't know? We all know him. This is the Sadiq of the community. Whenever you need something done the right way, with tikkun and all these type of things, that's we, 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 this is uh, well known. And then before you know it, he disappears. No time for thank you, no time to set up a drink. He disappears. He's, gone. He's on to the next, the next tikkun, the next mission. It's a shame that we lost him because I would have loved that my grandchildren could see such a type of rabbi. It's a big loss because you don't have too many people that you can point to and say, ah, that's, that's like that rabbi. Who are you going to point to? You could point to people that have a lot of wisdom, that have a lot of chokmah, that have... But this type of element is a rare breed. And I will say today that it's extinct. So we lost over here a very, very precious, endangered species. The factory that makes these type of people, my friends, is out of business. This product is not made anymore. And therefore, the loss is even that greater. En lanu halifato, en lanu timurato. The death of me the whole week. Either it's talking about Eliyahu and Navi on the day that he passed, the next day, Rav Tahlifa, that's, that, that's Khalifa. And finally, I will say to all those that stayed and gave the rabbi the respect. You're very lucky. When Eliyahu and Navi passed, the Pasuk in the Navi says, 
that Elisha was there. And Elisha asked from his rabbi a request. Please, Eliyahu, I want a gift. What do you want a gift? I want to have your greatness, but I want to have twice your greatness. Twice your greatness? How could you ask something from somebody that he doesn't have? If a person has $100 in his pocket, and you want everything, you tell him, give me the 100 But you can't ask him for 200 he doesn't have it. How could Elisha ask Eliyahu, I want Pishenayim, I want your greatness times two. And the Mefarshim say that at the time that the tzaddik is niftar, all of a sudden, all his deeds start to come together. And as they come together, the deeds start to grow exponentially. Now it's not just one deed here and one deed there. The deeds start to grow and there's, there's a momentum that starts to grow as well. Abraham Zakin, Baba Yamin. When the tzaddik leaves, he comes not with one day, but with all his days, and that becomes like a dynamo, like a nuclear reactor. And therefore, at the time that the hour that he passes, he has now twice the energy, at least. And Elisha says, I want it. He says, fine, if you'll be there at the time of the event, you'll get it. And he was there, and the hour went up, and sure enough, Eliyahu made five miracles, and the prophet Elisha did ten miracles. He got double the, double the power. And the rabbis come along and say that those that are there at the time of his sped, as was mentioned earlier, that the rabbi is here. And the rabbi is Eliyahu. And we ask the great rabbi, Rabbi, we want peace and name of your cohort. Give us the ability we came here, we stayed late. We have nothing better to do. You were generous in your lifetime, but now in your death, you're much greater even. Bishanayim. We asked the Niftar to give everybody kohot. Some of his kohot, his strengths, the strengths that made him a humble man, the strengths of simplicity, the strengths of love of the community, the strengths of love of family, the strengths of Yirat Shamaim, all those things that made him great. We're here, and you're here with us, and therefore we ask the Miruham, share the wealth with us. And just like Eliyahu acquiesced to Elisha, the Miruham Eliyahu ben Shafi'ah will acquiesce to those present and those that are respecting his passing. And I say, Amen.